Welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about the sleep physiology and the stages of sleep, and we'll talk about the characteristic of each. So when it comes to sleep physiology, here's what we know so far. Usually the trigger is dark room or dark place or thinking of sleep, which will trigger the suprachiasmic nucleus, and that will release neuropeneurin to stimulate the pineal gland. Now the pineal gland will release melatonin to start the circadian rhythm. Melatonin is a derivative of serotonin. Now the circadian rhythm is going to release prolactin, ACTH, neuropeneurin, and melatonin. So increasing, so repeating the cycle basically. So if you're asked what starts the circadian rhythm, it's going to be melatonin from the pineal gland. And if you're asked what starts the sleep cycle, it's going to be dark environment or dark place. So we have four main stages of sleep. And once you sleep, you can go down and up these four stages. So it's going to go something like this. It's going to go from N1 till N4. So basically, you're going to go to stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, and stage 4. And finally, you're going to come back. So it's going to be stage 4, stage 3, stage 2, stage 1. And then you're going to continue like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. Till you wake up. But here's a very important thing that you need to know. Every time you go back to stage 1, so for example, when you go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 4, 3, 2, 1 again, you're going to go to something we call REM, or Rapid Eye Movement Stage. So you reach Rapid Eye Movement Stage each time you complete one cycle. Now using an EEG, we can record the sleep waves or the brain activity during sleep. So once you're awake, you're going to have something we call beta waves. Beta waves basically have high frequency and low amplitudes. And then once you go, once you go to stage 1, you're going to have something we call theta waves. And in stage 2, you're going to have something called sleep spindles and K-complexes. Stage 3 doesn't have any significant waves. Stage 4 have something we call delta waves. Delta waves have low frequency and high amplitudes, which is basically the deepest stage of sleep. And REM sleep have beta waves again, so beta waves have high frequency and low amplitudes. And finally, here are some characteristics of each stage of sleep that differentiates them from one another, clinically. So, in stage 2, we have something called bruxism that occurs, which is basically when the patient starts chewing during sleep. It occurs in this stage. In stage 3, sleepwalking occurs, and night terrors, and bedwetting. In REM sleep, it's very important to know these characteristics. There is loss of motor tone in the body. There is increased the brain oxygen consumption and increase in pulse and blood pressure. Dreams and nightmares both occur in REM sleep. And it's important to know the difference between nightmares and sleep terrors. They're completely different things. And finally, penile and clitoral erections occur in this stage as well. Alright, so that's everything I've got about sleep. Um, hopefully I made this easier for you and see you guys later.